Hello everyone and thanks for hanging out with me. Here I have the MG Model R and I want to show you the car a bit and then drive a bit and show you how it is. And last week I had the MG5 and it's unbelievable the two cars that come out almost at the same time from the same manufacturer can be so extremely different. Unbelievable. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you about the specs. We have a 70 kilowatt hour battery, 65 kilowatt hours can be used. Charging is, oh, so loud. Charging can be AC, 11 kilowatt DC peak of 94. Right now I only get 75 kilowatt hour out of this Fastnet, but this is normal because fast, this, these hyperchargers have four, uh, maybe this, this one has only three modules of charging each 75 kilowatt and it's peaking at 75 because the e-tron beside me gets 140 so he's using uh, a two well, i should get two as well it's weird huh. maybe it is peaking at 75 does uh, i don't know um what do else do we have um wltp range is 400 kilometers top speed 200 kilometers an hour 132 kilowatt 179 horsepower this is a rear wheel drive not like the mg5 which was front wheel drive 7.9 seconds here to 100 kilometers an hour yeah that's the most important thing show you the car First we have the trunk, we have electric lift gate. I didn't see any gesture control, I tried. Maybe I, I just can't find it. Um, and we have a second pocket down here. Can you see? Yeah, have a lot of stuff in there. Um, and we have a thing, how much it costs. <laughs> Look at that, 50,000. We have one light in here, little side pocket. I don't see a 12 volt outlet. Let's see the front. Because we have a frunk in this car, we just do this twice. And then you have this little frunk here. That's reasonable deep, a lot of space. Look at the rear seats. We have nothing special except for and here's a warning and when you open the door if if it would detect a, a car um, we have little pockets here this is the lumbar support the same as in the mt5 we have down here two usb a's and air vents and we have two cup Ooh, we have an extra pocket here look at that and the two cup holders Light is the same as an MG5 on the top and the same uh, handles all except for the driver. The driver doesn't have the handles. But here we have a panoramic roof. In the door we have a normal window and mirror controls, lock, unlock. We have electric seats with memory function and we have our adaptive cruise control here and MG Pilot and the lights. Steering wheel is the same. Yeah, it beeps when you have the key in the car. So not when you have the key outside of the car, no. <laughs> you open the door and the key is in the car and complaining. We on the steering wheel is the same as the MG5. We have a uh, music source telephone in here to interact with the screen. And I show you the screen. So uh, you can switch between left and right. So this is the left, you see the green thing. And then on the right, on the right, you only have music. Um, what was the other thing? Ah, phone, yeah. Music and phone history. On the left, you have your speedometer on top, or you press something else. This is your ACC, then uh, speedometer is on the bottom. Then we have temperature and pressure of the tires. We have a first journey, then we have a second journey. Both can be reset. Then you have some settings. In here you have your um, a different power meter, for example, or the voltage amps of the battery and your energy flow. And with left, you can get out of here and then go back to there. Um, down here we have our drive mode and our regen level, same as an MG5. We have an extra cup holder here and you can open those two, have a deep pocket in here and 
glove box. Um, up here we have the um, controls to close the panoramic roof or open the a trunk. All mirrors in the front have a light. Why does this not work? <laughs> this one works. Okay. <laughs> Maybe someone has to sit there? I don't know. Doesn't work. Um, and you have some lights here in the front. Under the screen we have a big big pocket with a 12 volt outlet and two USB A's and there's a lot of space for phone. Let me show you the screen a bit. We have time, weather, where we are. I'm guessing you have 4G connection but I tried the voice control and it says I don't have internet connection. You have your normal overview where you can have charging and you have a button to finish charging, you have a charge limit, it tells you your state of charge and your uh, range and you have some settings, you can schedule charging and you have high voltage battery heating that's nice, you always come back with this button to home and you have to press very hard and very accurate navigation, like I said, hard this is horrible to zoom, especially when you're driving now here in standing it's it's fine, but when I was driving to try to find something is very annoying. Again, go back with this. We have volume control here. You have it of course on the steering wheel as well. You have your music or radio. And then here we have settings. You have your MG Pilot settings. It remembers that very well and you can go through some settings. You have your favorite button. Come on. Why? Favorite button here on the steering wheel and can have different settings. Uh, what you will need. Light settings. Oh god. And you also have normal settings. Is when you swipe here to the right, you have a normal. Yeah, if you get it right. And. Then you have sound settings and I don't know what. And it, and it remembers that, like I said, very well. I like that. So when you're in there and you go out, it remembers where you were. And you can go back to charging. You don't see charging power. You just see that it's charging and when it's done. But this time is so wrong. Before I charged and it went over the time that it showed. So it said 11 a.m. and it was 11.2. Yeah, but it was the same in the MG. You have your climate control here, um, and you have AC, uh, eco, um, heat or uh, climate. You have a button here, but you can also change it in here somehow. If AC, I turned that off right away. You can turn it off completely. Temperature, you have to press on it, and then you have to move it to the temperature that you like. Then it goes away, the same with here what I showed you before and then where the air goes and everything and press it again it goes away and if you want your normal you have to press this or up here the MG button also works so now let's try the space in the car first of all the seats the, the bottom is nice the back has has a few bumps in there but not like the MG5 who had it in the in in, in the bottom here it's more on the side and I can sit very well the, the the footrest is not as close as it was in the MG5 completely different I have this much headroom uh, there's enough space you can adjust the steering wheel up and down in and out normal um, what I noticed is that the door, door, uh, the armrest in the door and in the middle, it's very wide. I have to be, I have to do it very wide, and they're both very hard. So the, the, the door one is a bit better, but the one here in the middle is horrible. But he's sitting like this when you want to use the armrest on both things. I have it on the on the bottom, and let's see how the rear is. Uh, I'm 180 centimeters. Um, so much. Uh, a leg room here. I can put my feet under the front seat. That's awesome. I have all I'm touching the roof, so there's no headroom here. Let's check out the armrests. Oh, not closed. Um, yeah, the, <laughs> the the middle armrest is totally wobbly and moving around. It's not comfortable. The armrest in the door is fine. Yeah, 
the seats, no side support, but it's so normal for, for rear seats. It happens a lot. Now let's drive the MG Marvel R a bit. First the key, you have normal key, you have lock, unlock, trunk opening and frunk opening here. Um, when you start the car, you need the start stop button. It has to boot up, takes a few seconds and that's every time. I just turned it off uh, uh, 20 seconds ago. Uh, air conditioning works right away, but you have to wait for uh, this. Then every time you start, you are in normal mode and I want to be in, in um, sport mode. You have winter, eco, normal and sport and your region level always goes to, to one every time. I'm going to turn off uh, lane assist for that. You need vehicle, um, MG pilot, yeah, it remembered from the last time and then you can go away. Infotainment system, I'm sorry, this is so laggy, you have to press precise and very hard. Navigation, zooming uh, and moving around is horrible. This is the worst infotainment system I have ever uh, had experience with, I'm sorry. Uh, they need to update this. We have Android Auto though, so that works. But still, when you want to zoom in Google Maps, it's horrible. And the, the, the touch screen needs a lot of pressure and has to be accurate. Let's put it into drive. Um, the e-sound you can barely hear. You get 360 degree camera and all of this every time when you stand and there's a car around and you have to press it away if you don't want it. The turning circle is not very good, even, uh, even though it's rear wheel drive. Out. Stop, three, two, one, full. Ooh, it co comes in slow. You need 102. Yeah, we have it. No, almost, but I had to brake because <laughs> there are cars here. But it's 7.9 seconds. I just had to feel how it is. Yeah, since I have this car, I have uh, fog here in the front uh, uh, window and I can't get rid of it. I tried the extra button, I tried air conditioning, I tried heat, everything, it doesn't go away. So the power is a bit underwhelming even though it's 100, what was it, 180 horsepower. Um, regen is okay, it's not one pedal driving but it's okay. This car could not be more different to the MG5. It is unbelievable. Where the MG5 had great infotainment system, very responsive, very fast, uh, very logical, it reacted amazingly well, but the drive suspension was, eh, steering was okay, but not eh, great, and, and um, noise in the car at 130 was horrible. Here it's the complete opposite. The noise in the car at 130 is fine. Even at 150 it's okay. But the infotainment uh, and the, the, the suspension is, is totally fine. The, the, the car feels light, so when you go fast, it feels like you're, you're t uh, the car is too light and it, it's jumping um, even at, at a lower speed. The steering is okay, it's not amazing, but it's really okay. And, uh, but the infotainment system is just horrible with the long presses and everything. It's just from, I think it's the, like I said, bah, the worst uh, infotainment system experience I ever had in a car. Now we are 120, totally fine. Always when you go above 120, you get the warning, slow down, you're driving 120. I, in the beginning, I thought this only comes up when you drive uh, on a low state of charge. No, it comes up at 85% uh, before. It just comes up every time. I'm gonna drive a bit faster. I'm not going over 180, even though the speed, uh, top speed here is 200, but it's too unstable at that speed. Even at 180, it reacts to the wind very strongly, but nobody cares outside of Germany. Even at 150, it's fine. It get, of course gets a bit louder. 160, it's still okay with noise and how it handles totally fine yeah. and every time you go over that 120 it gives you the warning now full throttle I'm using 100% 150 160 now that's how my ID3 at 160 and it's almost the same noise level I would say 160 is just a weird speed why would you drive that fast 
Oh, but I, I feel every truck at 160 when I go by a truck, I'm moving around. Not nice at all. No, not recommended. I show you cruise control. Hit on the side. You have a, you press set, and oh no, you have to turn it on. Of course, be in the middle every time you turn it on. Same as an MG5, you get your few changes to uh, uh, the assist systems, and the distance changes too with every start. It was on 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 two before. Now it's on three. Put it on two and press set, and then with lever up you have uh, five kilometers an hour more or less do that and when you press it twice to you then you have self steering the mg pilot and this is again i felt that it does a lot of steering reacting to it so it, it it's, a, it's a bit of an uncomfortable ride like now it's 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 steering around and I think it's the thing what I said with the wind and whatever uh, or going by a truck, the car reacts a lot and, and then the MG pilot reacts too late to it. It, it, it. it doesn't do it like it should right away. It has a bit of a delay and so you're moving even more. So you're moving to the left and then the MG pilot goes to the right. I don't know. It, it's not a uh, comfortable feeling. But if you just need it for, for a few seconds to get something, it's fine. Cornering is also, it's, it's fine. It's, uh, we're not race car drivers here. It's okay, it's not amazing. Blinker noise. Oh, amazingly quiet, awesome, perfect. Love it. And the normal sound. Again, I'm standing here, there are cars behind me, three on, or, or beside me, driving by, 360 degree camera activates. Yeah, back to the MG Pilot. The thing that's a bit annoying uh, also is that you have when you have MG Pilot on, you cannot turn it off so you only have cruise control you have to even when you turn off cruise control and have it back on you again have the MG pilot as well you have to turn the whole system off and then you get normal cruise control but normal cruise control is okay it reacts a bit even in eco mode uh, it uh, it could it reacts a bit sudden and, and uncomfortable it's not a smooth ride when it has to slow down or speed up um, I don't think the mode has anything to do how it how it reacts anyways but in a, in a normal speed this is total fine when it comes to loudness comfortableness stability 250 I would say it's to totally normal I hope they improve the infotainment system, they have to. I hope it's not the hardware, I hope it's software side, that with an update it's just normal, like the MG5. We'll see. <laughs> but that's it for me. Thank you much for watching. Have a great day and take care. Bye.